All right. President Obama spent the full day today uh, campaigning in the great state of Ohio, the great swing state of Ohio, not incidentally. But while he was there today, Mr. Obama unveiled what looks to be a new phase, a new really pointed attack on his opponent this November, Mitt Romney. Watch. The centerpiece of my opponent's entire economic plan is not only to extend the Bush tax cuts, but then to add a new $5 trillion tax cut on top of it. The bulk of this would go to the wealthiest Americans. What this means is the average middle-class family with children would be hit with a tax increase of more than $2,000. Let me make sure people understand this. They're asking you to pay an extra $2,000, not to pay down the deficit, not to invest in our kids' education. Mr. Romney's asking you to pay more so that people like him get a tax cut. He's asking you to pay an extra two grand so people like him can get a tax cut. He is doing it for himself. This is a pointed new development in the campaign, and it hits on two important things. Everybody keeps saying, you know, the Republicans want to run on the economy and the Democrats want to run on something else. I I think that the the Democrats want to run on the economy, too. And the two things they're hitting on here is this. One is the economic plan that Mr. Romney is proposing. A brand new analysis out today, which does echo consistent analysis all along, uh, shows that what Mr. Romney is offering, which is what congressional Republicans are offering as well, uh, is in effect a package of huge economic benefits for the wealthiest Americans, uh, one that would actually make things harder economically for the vast majority of people, for the middle class. That sort of tax plan, that, that sort of an anti-populist economic plan that's bad for most people but good for the rich people, I mean, that can be a real political liability even in the best of times. But in bad economic times when already the only people doing well are the wealthy, I mean, being able to describe a candidate's tax plan like that is essentially a political shiv you can use against them. But the twist to that knife right now is the personal part of it. This is the new development in this part of the campaign. Beyond the question of whether Mr. Romney's economic proposals, in fact, will help wealthy people like him, essentially as a class, there is also now the specific personal question of how much his economic plan would help him, him, Mitt Romney, as an individual. Someone who lives, we all know now, in a sort of different tax universe than most of the rest of us. We know that there was one year when you paid about a 13.9% tax rate. Can we clear this up by by asking you a simple yes or no question? Was there ever any year when you paid lower than the 13.9%? I I haven't calculated that. I'm happy to uh, go back and look. Happy to go back and look. That was this past Sunday on ABC. There has still been no word from Mr. Romney on whether he went back and looked. ABC News reached out to the campaign today after Romney's answer. A spokesperson would only reiterate Mitt Romney has paid his taxes in full compliance with U.S. law, and he has paid 100 percent of what he has owed. So still no answer. That was Monday on ABC. Two days later now on Wednesday, Mr. Romney still apparently has not given them the information that he said he was going to give them. Remember when he said he was happy to go back and look, the question he was asked was whether he ever paid less than the 13.9 percent tax rate we know he paid in the one year for which he has released tax returns. Here's the weird thing, though. This I'll go back and look and then not actually going back and looking. This exact same thing happened to Mitt Romney a decade ago, 10 years ago. Asked by the Boston Globe when he was running for governor of Massachusetts about why he listed himself as a Utah resident and not a Massachusetts resident on his taxes, Mr. Romney told the, Mr. Romney told the Globe 10 years ago, just like he told ABC this week, that he would look into it. He would find out just exactly what was in his taxes and he would get back to them on it. Quoting from the Globe, Asked whether he received any advantages in Utah by filing as a full-time resident there in 1999 and 2000, Mr. Romney said he was not sure, but would respond to specific questions in writing. If you want to say, was there any tax benefit anywhere, you ought to help me understand exactly what that would mean, and I'd be happy to look at it, Mr. Romney said. I will get precisely the answer that you'd like, but you have to tell me exactly what you want, and I'll make sure I get that for you. 
still quoting from the Globe here. But after a reporter submitted written questions to a campaign aide, Mr. Romney's spokesman, Eric Fernstrom, said Mr. Romney would not be responding because, quote, he values his privacy and his wife's privacy. What the Boston Globe was trying to get to there 10 years ago was whether or not Mitt Romney was qualified to be the governor of Massachusetts. Not in some abstract political sense, but literally qualified, whether he met the written qualifications that you have to meet in order to be allowed to run for governor of Massachusetts. Massachusetts has the oldest functioning written constitution in the entire world. And dating back to the colonial era, the law in Massachusetts says that you have to be a continuous inhabitant of Massachusetts for the seven years immediately prior to you running for governor, or you cannot run for governor. In 2002, when Mitt Romney moved back to Massachusetts from Utah to run for governor in Massachusetts, that residency requirement was a really big problem for him. He maintained publicly until June of that year when he was running that he had always paid taxes as a Massachusetts resident. So this residency requirement was going to be no problem. Clearly, he met the residency requirement. He'd been paying Massachusetts resident taxes. That's what he said all along. But that June, that year that he was running, June 2002, under pressure from the Democrats in the state and under scrutiny from the Boston press, that story fell apart because it turns out he had not been paying taxes as a Massachusetts resident like he said he did. He had not been paying taxes as a Massachusetts resident. He had been paying taxes as a Utah resident. Mr. Romney had said that wasn't the case, but he got caught. After he got caught, he admitted, yeah, okay, he'd been filing taxes as a Utah resident. But he was retroactively now, after the fact, now that he was running for governor, now going back a few years and he was going to change that. Retroactively. But it was a huge mess. I mean, Mr. Romney had told a local newspaper reporter in Utah that he had declared Utah his primary residence for tax purposes. He had claimed a giant permanent resident of Utah tax credit on his big Utah house out there. He saved $54,000 in taxes by doing that. He had signed multiple years of tax returns as a part-time only or non-resident of Massachusetts. But all of that, he said, how are you going to explain having done all that? He said it was all other people's mistakes. The reporter that he talked to in 2000, who noted that Mr. Romney had declared his Utah home his primary residence, well, Mr. Romney said that must have been a mistake on the reporter's part. Mr. Romney told the Massachusetts State Ballot Commission, quote, I've met with that reporter at least 100 times over the last three years, and I do not recall a specific conversation about my residence in Utah. That reporter ultimately got a subpoena to appear in Massachusetts and testify as to whether or not Mr. Romney actually told her that, and the paper resisted that subpoena. In terms of the tax break that Mr. Romney got on his Utah house for being a full-time resident of Utah, he blamed a clerk in the tax assessor's office in Utah, saying he had never asked for that tax break. Somebody just accidentally gave it to him and accidentally saved him $54,000. The county assessor ended up taking the heat for it, although she also said at the time that such an error had never before occurred during her 12 years in office. What about all those tax returns for those multiple years that Mr. Romney signed saying he wasn't a Massachusetts resident? Can't really blame that on this reporter. Can't blame that on the clerk in the tax assessor's office. I mean, he signed these tax returns. What's his explanation for that one? His explanation was that he never bothered to read that stuff that he signed. Listen to this. Mr. Romney said he had always trusted his accountants and simply signed and dated the returns. He said he did not notice that a line asking for his domicile was left blank on the Massachusetts returns. Quote, I do not read those or review those before I sign them, nor their attached schedules. As you're probably aware... um, Your tax return is one of those things that you submit, you sign and submit under the penalty of perjury. This was something that was pointed out to Mr. Romney when he testified before the Massachusetts State Ballot Commission to try to be allowed to run for governor. Quote, if I were to hand you an affidavit, Mr. Romney, and at the end of it, I typed in your signature and above your signature, I put signed under the pains and penalties of perjury. And I said, Mr. Romney, sign this document. You'd read it first, wouldn't you? Romney, if you were to put it in front of me, yes. So you sign documents under the pains and penalties of perjury without necessarily reading them? Is that your testimony? Romney, I have not read the entire Massachusetts tax form, nor the federal tax form, nor the Utah tax form, and all of them have me sign under pains of penalty to the best of my knowledge and belief. And I do not read the entire form. This was 10 years ago. Ultimately, the residency challenge uh, failed to keep Mr. Romney off the ballot in Massachusetts. Democrats tried it, but it did not work. But... 
what they were able to uncover about his tax history and trying to prove that he wasn't really a Massachusetts resident showed that what he said was in his tax returns was not actually what was in his tax returns. Mr. Romney maintained publicly for months that he was a Massachusetts resident and he could prove it because he'd filed his taxes as a Massachusetts resident all those years. That's what he said was in his taxes. That was not what was in his taxes. And he seems to have known it at the time, even as he was making public claims to the contrary. When he finally got caught out in June of that year, he admitted that a few months earlier, when he decided to run for governor, earlier that spring, he had started the process of retroactively going back and changing those returns. Mr. Romney had not filed as a resident of Massachusetts. He said he did, but he didn't. He misled the public about it the whole time. And he misled reporters who were trying to get to the truth about it. Quote, earlier in the week, Mr. Romney rejected a request by the Boston Globe for copies of his tax returns with financial information redacted, but his residential status visible. A Romney spokesman insisted at the time the GOP candidate had filed his returns as a Massachusetts resident, but told the Globe's reporter, you're going to have to take my word for it. You're going to have to take my word for it. It's really important what's in those tax returns, but I'm not going to show them to you. Trust me about what's in them. After the truth started coming out, Mr. Romney eventually said then uh, to the Globe, just like he's saying to ABC now, that he would get them all the information they wanted. Sure, sure, I'll get you what you need. But even though he said that to the reporter face to face, he did not. He absolutely shut them down, just like he's shutting down ABC 10 years later. ABC News reached out to the campaign today after Romney's answer. A spokesperson would only reiterate Mitt Romney has paid his taxes in full compliance with U.S. law, and he has paid 100% of what he is owed. Trust me. You're going to have to take my word for it. Just like, trust me when I said I've always filed taxes as a Massachusetts resident, except for those years where you caught me not doing that and I had to retroactively go back and change them. This is becoming a bigger issue, not a smaller issue in the campaign. That new New York Times poll that came out today of all the swing states got lots of attention uh, because of the overall numbers showing President Obama ahead of Mr. Romney in Pennsylvania and Ohio and Florida, these hotly contested swing states right now. And honestly, that's fine as far as August polling goes for a November election, which is not very far. But look at this other thing that was in the polls. Look at the responses to this question. Asked if candidates should release multiple years of their tax returns, the majority of voters in Florida... In Ohio and in Pennsylvania, all say presidential candidates should release several years of their tax returns. And given the history here in Massachusetts, maybe especially Mitt Romney should. Joining us now is James Roosevelt Jr. He was the top lawyer for the Massachusetts Democratic Party when Mr. Romney's tax returns were part of their challenge about whether or not Mr. Romney was a Massachusetts resident or not. Uh, Mr. Roosevelt, thank you for your time tonight. Thanks for being here. Glad to be with you, Rachel. This is a, um, a, not a very complicated story, but sort of a deep story. It's a deep dive into what we know about Mr. Romney and his history, both as a citizen and, uh, and in terms of his financial life. In terms of the way I explained that history in Massachusetts, did I get any of that wrong as far as you know? No, I think you got it right. Uh, and uh, in trying to present this case to the Ballot Law Commission, we were trying to show exactly what he had said under oath, uh, uh, signing, as you point out, under the pains and penalties of perjury, not, by the way, as he characterized it, to the best of his knowledge and belief, but just under the pains and penalties of perjury. Uh, and we had the tax assessor statements in Utah. We had the Utah, uh, non, uh, the Utah resident tax returns, the Massachusetts non-resident tax returns. And then we had his attempt to, retro, to retroactively rewrite his personal history. He was trying to retroactively essentially refile his taxes. So his Massachusetts taxes would be filed as if he were a resident of the state. He was making that retroactive attempt while he was still publicly maintaining up until June of that year that he had always filed as a Massachusetts resident? That, that is true. Wow. Um, that seems to me to be the heart of the problem because what's happening right now with the demands to see Mr. Romney's tax returns, both from the Democratic opposition but also from the press, is that his answer has been to characterize what's in them and then say, said, essentially, trust me, this is what's in them. There's nothing wrong in them. They're perfect. They show everything to be perfectly legal. legal. Trust me on them. Um, as far as you're concerned, and obviously you still have a stake in this matter, you're still a Democratic Party activist in Massachusetts. 
Do you feel like there is an allegory between the trustworthiness that he showed a decade ago and these questions now? Well, I think it fits with the pattern of trying to rewrite what his beliefs are, what his positions on issues are, and with trying to retroactively rewrite uh, his personal history. And the, the interesting thing was that in the ballot law commission hearing, we were trying to show what we believed to be true, that he had changed his residence to Utah. He was trying to show that he had maintained continuous ties with Massachusetts while he was in Utah working on the Olympics. And that's why he testified about his continuing uh, business uh, interests in Massachusetts, his uh, continuing uh, uh, return to Massachusetts for uh, board meetings that grew out of his uh, employment at Bain. Looking at through the uh, transcripts today of his testimony before the Ballot Law Commission, which uh, were voluminous and um, sort of mind-bending by the end of the day, um, one of the things that becomes quite clear is that when he's trying to say he spent lots of time in Massachusetts, it's on a lot of it is on business-related matters, serving on the board of the Staples Corporation, which, of course, was very heavily involved with his time um, at Bain, serving on the board of another corporation called the Lifelike Corporation, uh, and some other business interests that did not seem to be associated with Bain, when there was this more recent controversy about whether or not he should be seen as having been involved with Bain after he left to go uh, run the Olympics, did you see that evidence that he presented a decade ago as being relevant to his case there? He was trying to, to show that he had family and social ties back to Massachusetts, and the, really nobody was disputing that. Uh, the fact is that he had been very clearly stating one thing about his life, then he started stating something else, and that he did this, these statements that, uh, that he then tried to change later, in a way, oddly enough, it was always in a way that saved him taxes, whether it was property taxes or uh, where he declared himself to have a principal residence in Utah and in Massachusetts, which got him a tax benefit in both places, or uh, income taxes. James Roosevelt, Jr., uh, former top lawyer for the Massachusetts Democratic Party, a current legal volunteer for the party in the state. Uh, thank you very much for joining us tonight, sir. I really appreciate your time on this. Nice to be with you. Thank you. Um, as always, Mr. Romney, if you would like to talk with me about any of this stuff, mi casa es su casa. Anytime, we would love to have you. Seriously. Okay. More to come here, uh, including the Obama campaign officially making an argument, President Obama approving a message uh, that I think may never have been made by a Democratic candidate running against a Republican candidate in modern times. Common Wisdom says what the Obama campaign has just started doing is actually very risky. Uh, but Congressman Barney Frank will join us here to assess the risks. Stay with us.